So today we're talking about what is indexed universal life insurance. And this is a question we get a lot. What we're gonna do is break down some of the terms that you would hear and associated with indexed universal life insurance. Another thing we're gonna do is kinda of talk about some of the pros and cons that go along with it. What's the hype that's out there and what's reality? And then kinda of put it all together for you. So think of this like a financial literacy boot camp, right? What's the one thing that you hear about indexed universal life insurance? Well, the first word that goes in there is indexed, right? So what does that really mean? What happens is there's two components. When you pay your premium, which is the dollars you spend on life insurance, when you pay that premium, part of that premium pays the insurance, right? That death benefit that's left for your family. The other part goes into a, an account and it goes basically into the general account of the insurance company. And what they're going to do is they're going to credit you interest based on the performance of whatever index you're in. So the most common index that you'll hear quoted is the S&P 500, right? That's the standard and Poor's 500. And it's a basic overall barometer for the US economy, right? So they take these 500 companies, they lump them into what's called an index. And that's what you see all over the news, right? The S&P is up X amount of percent. So how does that relate to the index? In the index universal life insurance, if you're tracking the S&P 500, the insurance company is going to give you the performance or credit you the performance of that index year over year, right? So point to point. So if you start today, one year later, they're going to look at that and whatever the performance was over that period of time, that's the interest rate you're going to get credited up to what's usually called a cap. So the cap rate is how much of that participant, you know, how much you'll be able to get, right? So if your cap rate is 10%, that says anywhere between zero and 10%, that's what you'll get credited. So if the S&P 500 does 8%, you're gonna get 8%. If it does 10%, you'll get 10. If it does minus 30, right, you'll get zero and we'll talk about that. But if it does 15, 20, 25, 30%, you're still only getting that cap of 10%. So when we talk about markets falling and, and that negative 20 or negative 30, these downturns that we've seen, well, if you experience that kind of loss in your portfolio, that could be detrimental. In an index universal life insurance policy, what's really nice is they put a floor, right? And they say you can't lose or you can't lose any more than zero, right? So zero is my floor, which means that I'll get no interest credit if the market performs poorly. So that cap rate, again, if it's 10%, the most you'll ever get is 10%, but with that floor that's built in there, the worst you'll ever do is zero. The next piece that they'll give you is you'll hear something called a participation rate. So you could have a cap rate or you could have a participation rate. Well, what's that mean? Well, participation rate doesn't give you a cap on how much you can earn, but it does say how much you can participate in the earnings. So that participation rate could be 40%, could be 50, could be 70, could be 100. I've seen participation rates above 100%. So it's just something that you have to take a look at and decide, do I want to participate and have a participation rate or do I want to be capped and have a cap rate? And with this participation rate, you still have that floor of zero, right? So either way, what you're looking at is, you know, some companies advertise cap rates, some companies advertise participation rates, other companies advertise both. So you really just have to think of, well, what makes more sense for me? What am I trying to accomplish? Am I comfortable? with the participation rate or comfortable with the cap rate, is that going to give me enough growth? What you wanna do is take a look at both of them, but be aware that those rates are subject to change every single year. So as things renew, changes in the economy, that cap rate could move up 
it could move down. The participation rate could move up, it could move down. So there will also be minimums in all of those and that's really what you wanna focus on is what's the worst case scenario that I could have happen inside of this contract because we always want the upside and that's easy to prepare for but we also have to look at the downside and what's the worst that I can ever get in this. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons when it comes to index universal life insurance. Uh, first thing is on funding, right? So generally with life insurance, we wanna make sure that we maintain all the tax benefits that we can in it. Uh, meaning that, you know, with an index universal life insurance policy, we probably wanna have uh, tax-free retirement income or we want to have access to the cash what before retirement and we want to be able to pull that out in a tax-free manner. If that's something that you're trying to do, you want to make sure when you're funding, you're either funding it on an annual basis or at least month to month, right? If you're doing one of those two things, you're going to be able to easily stay within the modified endowment contract guidelines right? Because we don't want to violate those rules and lose some of those good tax benefits while we're living. So the funding and the way we fund it makes a lot of sense for people to, you know, get into that habit of saving monthly uh, and funding that contract monthly. And what happens is every time you're putting in that money each month, you're starting a new point to point on your index, right? So you're starting a new year each contribution you're making. What you're doing is you're creating a dollar cost average of your indexes, right? So each point to point creates a new year, which means that year gets its own interest rate crediting. So every month I'm getting a different interest rate credit as I continually fund this vehicle. The index universal life policy, because of the cash value accumulation that it has, oftentimes people will look at it as an alternative if say they make too much money and they can't contribute to a Roth IRA, they might put their money into this type of vehicle. Even if you're not making too much to contribute to a Roth, it might make sense to do this because maybe you do still need to provide a death benefit to your family. And here's a great way to have market participation, not have to worry about overall market losses and still get life insurance. Hey, this is Rob Gill for The Money Minute, and Eddie Gardner is dropping some world-class knowledge that could help put money back into your pocket where it belongs. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can hear more videos from Ed. One of the things you really want to look out for is the hype in Index Universal Life Insurance versus reality. And what do I mean by that? People will show you illustrations, and illustrations in the past were really egregious, showing 14 and 15% returns year over year, just not attainable. Um, throughout the years, there's been different regulations that's come along to kind of stop some of that. But still, companies are finding ways to illustrate better and better. You want to take a look at what is the guarantee on the Index Universal Life, what is currently illustrated, and the midpoint of that illustration. Those three things should paint a good enough picture for you to understand that it's not just going to be what this illustrated amount is. And while they've come down and become more realistic in the illustrations, yes, they could do better than currently illustrated, but if they don't, you want to see what that change in, in interest rate credit could mean to your policy. So think about bowling with bumpers, right? You have these bumpers up, you throw the ball down, it hits one side, hits this side, and then you hit some pins, right? That's the idea behind the index universal life policy. You have this floor, so we know we're not going in the gutter, but we also have this cap or participation rate, so maybe we're not getting a strike every time, but we know we'll probably hit some pins. And that's what you're looking to do with index universal life, is get some good returns year over year and try to grow this policy along with having this nice death benefit for your family. The most important thing when you're dealing with an index universal life insurance policy is to have it structured by somebody that understands what your goals are, what you're trying to do, and making sure that it's properly funded. Because oftentimes people look at that funding and the cheapest is not always the best, right? It's not always about how cheap it can be, 
but is it properly structured and properly funded so that it meets my needs, not just today, but long-term into the future. If you're looking for that team, click the link below. One of the team members can reach out and they can walk you through, is this Index Universal Life Policy the right thing for you and how we can properly structure it.